It is said that memory does not form in a child until they are past their earliest years. But this has never been true for me. No, Victor Von Doom remembers all. Every moment of this life which has tried so hard, yet failed to break me. Every loss, every sacrifice, every vengeance taken by these hands. I could not forget them if I tried. Father never believed me, but I swore that my awareness began in my mother's womb. Perhaps it was the demons mother was dallying with that made this possible. Perhaps it was their touch that opened my mind too clearly and too early. But regardless, what father couldn't believe my stories, mother never doubted me for a moment. Of course, my lovely Victor. You're not like other boys. Mama knows that. Mother's loving arms. How I lived for her embrace, as all boys do. If only I could have known why her hands were always so cold. But it was only years later, after it was much too late. Too late for her. Too late for father, too late for the entire world, that I would learn about her demons. A child of three cannot be expected to understand such things, of course. I only knew that my dear mother, who smiled at me with such love, also carried a dark shadow in her eyes, and that her hands were always cold as ice. Father knew that she was delving into black arts, and he feared it with all his heart. Cynthia, you must stop this insanity. Think of your family. Think of your son. That's what I am thinking about, Werner. Look at us. Our people are constantly in tatters, barely one step ahead of the Baron's persecution. But if we had some power, Victor's life, it could be better than this. Cynthia, please! Not that kind of power. Of course, father was right. Mother did not understand the sacrifices her desires would demand. Nor that the power she sought would be beyond her abilities to control. And so, one night, her spells brought disaster to us all. Manipulated by a demon, she was suddenly filled with a thirst for vengeance on the Baron's men. The soldiers who kept their little gypsy band on the run. Who beat us and stole our earnings when they could. Who had done worse to our women. I would hear of her actions that night only later, and only through whispers in the dark. But it was said that she killed many soldiers, and at the same time.
allowed her the power to do so. Took the life of every child no. in the village as payment. No, what have I? This... this was not... The surviving villagers chased the gypsy witch into the forest, where she fell to a soldier's blade. Father only found her in time for a tearful goodbye, and to hear the final whispered words he would never share with me. I would only know silent grief from him for years after. His mother's final words. Morris was one of the best friends, and Morris told me the witch's final words were about young Victor. Begging, or rather, warning her husband to keep him away from her dark places. I suppose, considering what happened at her funeral, that she was a fair judge of what the boy would turn out to be. We buried Mother in an unmarked grave on a hill, in the hours just after dawn. The camp was on the move trying to get everyone packed up and on the road before the Baron's men found out what had happened in the nearby village. No one spoke, but their faces said more than enough. They were scared for their lives. And they looked at my father, their leader, their friend, their healer, the man who'd just lost the love of his life. They looked at him with blame in their eyes. It may be best if our ways were to part for a time, at least, Werner. Boris, you can't be. You don't mean. You turn us out? After everything, we're on a run for our lives now, Werner, through no fault of our own. Yes, your witch of a wife did us all in, Werner. With her black hearts and... I couldn't believe what I was hearing. My father and mother loved these people. They were our family. And they were going to cast us out. They were calling my mother names right over her grave. I was just a boy, understand. Not long past my fourth birthday. But I understood that this was wrong. So I spoke up. Shut up! Of course, even at that age, my intelligence and vocabulary were far beyond most in our group. So I was able, without much effort, to persuade them to see the light, as it were. Father and I were not turned away. What did you say to them exactly? Ah, that's unimportant. I'll tell you what he said, because I'll never forget it. Maybe I was in the wrong. True, to say such things about a woman like that. But young Victor, he chilled us to the bone that day. Shut up, right now, all of you. You say my mother was a witch. That she brought doom upon you all. Well, if you cast us out, I swear to you, I will grow up to be exactly like her. When I'm truly my mother's son, I'll track you all down, and the darkness that she brought will be nothing compared to what I do to you. And he meant every word of it. Imagine the group of us frightened of a child. Of course, we knew then that he already was his mother's child. But we never spoke of it again. Not within his earshot. For the few years after that, we just traveled. Always on the move. Father with his quiet grief. And me simply watching him. We rarely spoke of Mother. And when we did, we never spoke of her magics or what she'd done. I suppose his hope was that as I grew older, I'd forget everything but her loving smile. That I'd lose myself in the happiness of childhood and our travels. As I said, father always underestimated my memory. But though I never forgot, I did stop dwelling on her loss. As did he, eventually. 
And as the years passed, our gypsy life did become a happy one. Of course, most of the other children kept their distance from me after mother's death. Most, but not all. Where you know? <laughs> <laughs> Live while you can, girl. For Victor Von Doom will have his revenge. No one dunks Von Doom and lives to tell the tale. Victor, no, my dress! <laughs> Valeria was the only friend I needed. The only one who really knew how to make me smile. Look at us. We're going to be in so much trouble, Victor. When I was 11 years old, the only thing I wanted from the world was to grow up and marry her. Don't worry, Valeria. We'll just tell them you saved me from drowning. In four feet of water, Victor. Hmm. Then perhaps there should be a sea serpent in our story, too. <laughs> Our simple life seems to a child, even to one like me. And how quickly you can be reminded of life's true nature. No, Boris. What are they? Calm yourself, Victor. It's not what you fear. The Baron's wife has taken ill, son. So he has sent his men for a heal. But father, you can't go with- It's alright, Victor. I'll return to you soon after I've done what I can for the Baroness. Be steady, child. Your father is a great man. He will be fine. No. No good can come of this, Boris. Baron and his men. Victor! Wait! Wait for me! The killers. They care nothing for our kind. And of course I was right. By nightfall the next day, father had returned. With disaster at his heels. Don't ask questions, Victor. Just come with me now. But father... I couldn't save her, Victor. Her body was already riddled with cancer. But the Baron... He means to blame me for her death. I stole away this morning and rode all day. The Baron's men can't be far behind. We must ride for our lives. But where would we go? Our tribe was camped at the foot of the Lecverian Alps, so the mountains were our only path, and those passes were treacherous, even in fair weather. But this was the end of autumn, so what was treacherous would become deadly the higher we climbed. Our horse fled on the second day. Perhaps feeling the rain turn to ice scared her off. Or perhaps she simply had enough sense to know we were damned. Four days we hid, watching the Baron's men on the lower passes search for us. They, with their full stomachs and warm coats. We, freezing and starving. If it was a waiting game, they would surely win. We, we, we can't do this, Father. We, we have to fight them. Where we could make a stand. There's a spot on the path where we could make a stand. Oh, my son. How like your mother you are. And your reason. Come, put on my coat. They'll give up soon. Father was right. They did give up. Just not soon enough. The next morning I woke up with my father's arms around me. But there was something different this time. His grip was cold as ice. And I couldn't make him let me free. Father, please! Father, please! Wake up! Wake! I have no idea how much time passed that morning. Locked in father's slow death grip. I stopped screaming and struggling at some point. Resigned to my own death, which was surely not far from me. 
But father's cold embrace brought my thoughts back to mother, to mother's hands. At once, I understood. I knew that some cold is so cold it burns you to your core. And I knew my mother's true fate. She had died in the service of a demon, and it was with demons that her soul would reside, in eternal torment. Sometime after that thought, Boris and the others found us. The next days are unclear. I remember that father was not yet dead. I remember him whispering, halting last words. I remember the Baron's men taking his body away to present it to their master. And I remember being angry, as I was when mother had died. Except this time, my anger had become cold. Cold like mother's hands. Cold like death. Cold like the world. Victor? After his father's death, I don't. Victor was. He was so different. He was never the nicest of the boys in our family. But he and Valeria at least were close. Yet he even pushed her away after that. I remember she came crying to me. Oh, Silvana, I don't know what to do. Poor Victor. He's suffering so, but. He won't let me help him. Valeria, you can't rely on that one. He was mocked by the devil early and you know it. How can you say that? Do you not remember his mother? What she was? Of course. This was before we all knew that Victor had found his mother's strongbox among his father's things. From that point on, his fate was surely sealed. Mother's effects were a revelation. I had never forgotten her, or that she had danced with the demons, but to actually see the spell books. To realize I was blessed with the same talent she had been. I knew then that my destiny was to save Mother, to rescue her from her hellish torment. I would enter the nether realms and find her, at any cost. But as the years passed, Years where the black arts brought me no success, I slowly turned to science. In my innocence, I thought to combine science and magic, forcing the black arts to follow my rules, not their own. If I was a prodigy at sorcery, then I cannot express how quickly I mastered science. And through this mastery and the things I created, I was able to help our people the way his mother had always sought to. I was able to make the Baron's men run from us in fear. By the time I was 16 years old, I was the de facto leader of our clan. My intellect far outstripped those around me, so it was a natural progression. Only Valeria did I see as approaching an equal because of our childhood love. Yet we had grown apart, and when she looked at me, I saw only sadness in her eyes. What more could she feel? I suppose she didn't understand my destiny. She didn't understand that everything I'd done, all the inventions and displays of power, they were only a digression along my true path. My ever-frustrating attempts to reach the nether realms, to find my mother, to find my mother. All the things I taught myself had been with that goal in mind. Vengeance on the Baron's men was simply an afterthought to years on the run from these same vicious men. For when I looked at these soldiers, I thought about father's final embrace. 
but not mother's fake mistakes. And what drove me to save mother drove me also to punish the people who forced her to seek counsel from the damned in the first place. But this vengeance was almost like a game. Our people striking a blow against the oppressor and then running for the hills. But one night, that all changed. I had gone walking in the night breeze, walking off the frustration of yet another failed attempt to reach my mother. And in my black mood, I lost track of time and place until... You! Halt! Stop where you are, Gypsy! You! You're him! I had ventured too close to the route of the White Patrol. And now one of the Baron's men would make me pay with my life. I had left in such a foul mood that I had brought none of my inventions with me that night. Thus, I had no means to save myself from a fool with a gun. You're that Von Doom! The Baron's reward on your head will have me and mine living in a castle, gypsy brat! What? No means save one. The cold fire. You seek a reward, you foul creature? I pray you find one. It takes far longer to strangle a man than I'd imagined. I kept my hands locked around his throat for several minutes after he stopped struggling. Just to be certain. And I looked into his eyes to see if there was any change from living to death. But I saw nothing. Inside, though, I felt the cold vanish as I looked down at this poor fool. My hands began to shake, and I suddenly felt the horror of what I'd done. Like a child, for one last time, I turned and ran. Thinking, this is what she must have felt that night. Thinking, now I truly am my mother's son. <sighs> my hands were still shaking when I awoke the next day, and the dead soldier's pathetic face stared at me whenever I closed my eyes. <sighs> it was appalling. How could I fall victim to such a plague of guilt and anxiety? <sighs> I resigned to block it out of my thoughts. My family's blood was on their hands, and now their blood was on mine. So the scales were beginning to balance. Why could my shaking hands not understand that? Victor, are you awake, young master? Yes, what is it, Boris? A man is here to see you. A man from the United States. So? You're the famous Victor Von Doom I've heard about. I am Victor Von Doom. You're a hard man to find, Von Doom. By design, yes. What can I do for you? Of course, my achievements have become so legendary that this general had come all the way from the United States to track me down. Apparently with some fear that his enemies would find me first. There were offers of money and opportunities to study in the finest schools and laboratories in the world. On any other day, I might have struck a harder bargain, made them pay a higher price for my participation. But on this day, with my trembling hands, all I wanted was to be away from Latveria. When can we leave? And so I escaped to America, where I would lose everything.
My arrival those long years ago was not through the typical means. I had no papers, no student visa. No, what I had instead was my mind. My ability to see further into the future than any scientists these men had ever encountered. That was Von Doom's passport into the new world, and my hosts were eager to harness it for their own goals. General Masterson, Mr. Fondue, welcome to the United States. I'm sure we're going to have a long and fruitful relationship. I suppose we'll see, won't we? Yeah. <laughs> they told me you were all business, Von Doom. Let's show you to the lab, then. This facility is less than an hour from State University, where you'll be attending classes most days. Study up, learn whatever you please. But your real work will be here for us. In these buildings, you'll have the finest technology in the civilized world at your disposal. And if we don't have it, understand, you can probably make it. It's true, General Master Sen, that I'm quite skilled at inventing what I need. You see, in my country, we do not have the luxuries you Americans are accustomed to. Well then, we'll see that you get well accustomed to those luxuries yourself, son. Now, let's give you the grand tour and then we'll take you to the campus to fill out your enrollment forms. There's another student there we need to meet with anyway. As I said, I saw this American arrangement as a chance to escape. To give myself a new beginning, as it were. And I knew why they wanted me. To maintain superiority in their conflicts with their enemies. But standing in that laboratory, I saw things I'd never dreamed would be within my grasp. And I realized that Von Doom would not be the only one being used in this bargain. And as simply as that, I put the troubles of the past aside to focus on my future. There was a wealth of education and knowledge being laid at my feet, and I would take it all in to serve my own destiny. When I closed my eyes that night in my private dormitory room on the State University campus, I did not see the face of the soldier I'd killed. Did not feel my hands tight around his throat. No. All I felt was the embrace of my parents, both lost beyond the veil, and I slept like a baby. I thought you were supposed to room with Reed Richards. Didn't you meet him that day? Too much has been made of that. I did meet Richards in the university's science lab. He was the other student the general had mentioned. And yes, Richards did suggest that we share a dormitory room. Being as we're both theoretical science majors, I figure it could be fun. But General Masterson had already arranged for me a room with a secret soundproof lab attached. I've not come here for fun, and I've no need for another in my personal space. Sure. I understand. Nice to meet you anyway, Victor. In truth, my first meeting with Richards left almost no impression. My thoughts were on the expanding horizons before me. It wasn't until a few weeks later, in class, that Richards truly came to my attention. No, I don't believe that's what Einstein was trying to say, Victor. I'm sure it wasn't, Professor. But it is what I am not trying, but actually am, say. Then I'm afraid you've lost me, Victor. Will wonders never cease? I'm saying that time is not a flowing river the way it appears to us. Time exists as a constant. But most humans' minds are unable to perceive it in any capacity other than the most linear. In essence, we are then time's prisoners. So you believe that time is a physical dimension? Is that what you're saying? Of course it is. There are many planes of existence, Professor, that we are yet too blind to comprehend. I have to agree with Victor, Professor Snurk. My own experiments have already scratched the surface of other realms. I believe that phenomena such as poltergeists and alien sightings may actually be instances where these planes of reality 
are briefly visible to the human eye. Do you indeed? That's quite a statement, Reed. Yes, it is, Richards. But when I need your assistance on an argument, I'll ask for it. Richard's intellect was clearly to be respected, but he was so wide-eyed about the outer planes of reality that surround us. So like a child. But I knew the things dwelling there wished us anything but happiness. And that innocence of his disgusted me, because I saw it reflected around me all over the college campus. These insipid Americans, caring about nothing but sports and beer and manufactured romantic melodrama. The crying girls, distraught over the latest pitiful breakup. The cheerleaders, cheering for empty victories. All so pretty and vacant. Did you hear his accent? So sexy. Did you hear his accent? Of course I could have heard any of them. At my whim. I was handsome and confident. And more than that, I was foreign. So sexy. But while I had no interest in these common American pursuits, I did develop a small group of followers. Students who felt honored to merely assist in my experiments. You sure you don't want to come along, Victor? Should be a real blast. I can only imagine, Kurtz. But no. I have work to do. Have fun. To my surprise, the military base where my other work was done was filled with much the same insipidness that I found at school. They were so pleased with themselves that they couldn't imagine I might have my own agenda. Couldn't imagine that not everyone in the world longed to be part of the American dream. And that made it so easy for me. I had but to give them the smallest breakthroughs. And you say we can program these for combat? It's still early yet, General. But I do foresee that, yes. And anything I wanted for my private laboratory was mine for the asking. Someday soon, I was sure. I would have everything I needed for my true breakthrough. Mother. So it was that three years passed. Years of study and experimentation and careful deception. And I must confess, while I remained focused on my mission, I also grew cocky as my intellect sharpened. I forgot my destiny was tied to that of the Von Dooms who came before me. I forgot why I left my homeland. And in my arrogance, my complacency, I let my guard down for one night. No way! Victor Von Doom at a kegger? I must be drunk already! Please, Kurtz, let's not make a production out of it. I merely wanted to see how the other 99.9% .9 live for a change. <laughs> Tell me that isn't that oaf Ben Grimm surrounded by all those cooing females. Sure, Ben's the big man on campus, you know? Football star and all. Yes. But you know, there's a few cute numbers that have been dying to meet you. Hell, I've been getting action just telling them I'm your assistant. I can't recall exactly how it happened. Which I suspect is the result of my first sampling of alcohol. But somehow I found myself walking the grounds with a beautiful girl, whose name I also can't remember. I was bragging, telling her of my days in Latveria, telling her what the future had in store for me. Then she kissed me, differently than I'd ever been kissed before. Not gentle, like Valeria's kisses. No, there was nothing gentle about this girl. Not that I minded. But when I looked into her eyes, I didn't see the beauty and intelligence of my mother, or of Valeria. I saw only emptiness. And I couldn't allow it. Hey! Oh. Ah. 
This vacant little cretin could not be the one to get behind Von Doom's defenses. Her empty eyes pleaded, but I felt nothing for her. No pity. Nothing. And I thought, what kind of man am I? Am I some kind of demon? And I remembered my mother. And I remembered the last night in Latveria. And that, and nothing else, saved a pitiful creature's life. She fled, and I awaited whatever actions would be taken against me, conjuring a story which would convince the authorities of my innocence. But no authorities ever came, and indeed the girl in question was never seen at the school again. At least not by me. Perhaps her shame overwhelmed her, as well it should have. The incident at the end of junior year, her name was Sandy Bidwell, and she didn't quit school. She was forced out. Apparently she tried to press charges against Victor, but someone tipped off his military connections. And between the school administration and the government, the whole thing was hushed up. Next thing you know, her folks are yanking her out of school, driving her home in a brand new Rolls Royce. Victor just continued his studies like nothing had ever happened, but a few of us knew, and it changed everything for us. Victor went from being this eccentric foreign exchange student whose corpse we mostly just tolerated, to someone who literally scared the hell out of us. And these military backers of his, they knew too, and they didn't care. They just wanted whatever they could get out of that twisted mind of his. And between the school administration and the government, the whole thing was hushed up. After that, I withdrew even more into my studies. That momentary lapse would not be repeated. I would not let this place, these Americans, get to me. And if, from the outside, I appeared isolated, I assure you, I was not lonely. And my work for my benefactors was outpacing even their high expectations. When standing on the portal, one would be able to traverse back through time. Amazing! And how far are you from perfecting this? Not far. The chimpanzee arrived on the platform yesterday. And according to my notes, I was planning to use him as my first subject early next week. So... Wait! Which one are you talking about? They're one and the same, General Master Sir. One is simply from a week in the future. So, as I say, it stands to reason that by this time next week, I'll have completed a successful test, at least. Von Doom, you are a wonder. If the Richards kid turns out to be half as valuable as you have. Richards? I thought he turned you down. He did, but we came to an arrangement last week anyway. Richards wants in on the space program. So he'll do some work for us to help his chances there. Hmm. Well, keep him out of my way. Victor, I keep everyone out of your way. That's how we like it, don't we? Now explain to me why these haven't gone live yet. There are some internal logic problems with the artificial intelligence that I'm still trying to work out. What's the problem? Well, they think they're people, General. And that makes them harder to program. Do they? Not to worry. I'll have it worked out soon enough. Now, let me show you that stealth bomb we talked about. In truth, much as I loathed the men I worked for on that base, the work itself was quite fulfilling. As was the work I did in my private laboratory, which was poised for a breakthrough that none could have expected. A breakthrough that would strip reality down to its essence, that would allow Victor Von Doom access to all planes of existence, where I would free Mother from an eternity of torment in the Nether Realms. Victor, you around? What? My god. How did he... But that's not... This is so far ahead of the curve. 
What the hell are you doing in my private quarters, Richards? Besides snooping through my work- Hey, Victor, sorry, the door was open and I just couldn't help myself. You're working on dimensional warps and matter transmutation, right? But some of the equations didn't make any sense to me. What language is that? Perhaps you've confused me with someone in need of a collaborator, Richards. But I assure you, I'm not. Get out. Now. Of course, Richards couldn't understand my equations. Because I'd gone beyond pure science, where his intellect was stuck. I'd finally found the synthesis between my mother's magics and science that I dreamed of as a youth. That was going to open the door for me. And I was foolish enough to believe I was prepared for what was behind it. You sure about this, Victor? I can't monitor the energy levels the way it's set up. Just shut up and do as you're told, Kurtz. Sure, I helped him. Told you I was scared to death of him. So I flipped the switch and the whole place blew to hell. Cost me my degree and an eye. It just blew up right away then, like the report said. Actually, no, it wasn't right away, really. Time seemed to freeze. And Victor looked like he was disappearing, or like he was covered in static. And for a moment, just before everything exploded, I could have sworn I heard him say something. But mother, but mother, please, please, I'm so, I'm so alone, alone. It was not like anything I had expected. I thought for the first few hours that I would lose my mind. Finding her would be like catching a single drop of rain falling into the ocean. Mother! But at last, after what seemed like weeks, I caught sight of her. Surrounded by fire that held no heat, but still managed to burn her constant tears. Victor, Victor, Victor. No, no, no. Not my beautiful boy. Not here. Why has one of this come to pass? I begged him. But I came to save you, mother. You must not be here, my son. You must believe. You must forget me. But, mother, please, I'm so, I'm so. As terrible as her fearful rejection was, the reason for her fear was many times more terrible. Who is this filthy little morsel, Cynthia? Not the beast that stewed in your black loins. Oh, mercy, my leash. I beg. What do I see? No. Trespass. No, no, no. I do not, of course, remember the explosion. But I'll never forget the scream in my mother's throat that preceded it. The next thing I remember is waking up a few days later in a military hospital. Within hours of consciousness, the dean of the university was at my bedside. Not to comfort his prized student, no. But to inform me that I was expelled. That I'd nearly cost Kurtz his life. That I was a disgrace. And on and on. I stopped listening because I didn't care anymore. And I didn't care when General Masterson stopped in later to tell me that my expulsion would not affect my work for his people. I didn't care about anything but my failure, my weakness. Days passed without a word from me. I was still lost in that hellish realm in my mind. 
agonizing over my every misstep. And when I removed my bandages, the agony only grew worse. No, damn it, no! My face was ruined, but worse still, in my scars I could still feel the demon's claws touching me. And when I looked at what was left of me, the cold fire touched me to my soul, and his voice echoed in my mind, accompanied by my mother's screams. I had lost all my years of planning and work, and I was but a bumbling fool. A fool who would never be able to look at himself in the mirror again. A week later, locked in my bitterness, I was plotting my escape. I would not stay here. Would not work for these smug Americans. It was my reliance on their technology that had weakened me. Their effusive praise that made me think I was more than I was. That I was ready. And since they had taken everything that had mattered for me, I would leave them with nothing as well. All my inventions, my breakthroughs, every scrap of knowledge I'd amassed for their use, would be destroyed. Self-destruct in T-minus 55 seconds. What in the Sam Hill is going on here, soldier? Don't laugh, General. Bob Dome's laugh. My God. Sergeant, get me Bob Doom right now. I want that bastard in chains. You can't fight him, General. He's vanished. That little son of a bitch. And so it was that I left America a broken man. With no thought that I would ever see my homeland again. Oh, I I'm sorry, sir. Does it... does it hurt much? More than you can know. Flight from America had left me but a shadow of what I had been, or what I thought I had been. Now I was a fractured man, a man with no face, plagued by nightmares. No! no. Mother, no. no! Let her go! Don't you touch her! Such a bloody little man, you poor Sixiander. Shall we let him see you burn? No! Mother, no! Run, run, freak, freak, freak. Kill him, kill him. Kill you. Brother, where is it you think you can go, suckling? I am inside you now. I flow in your cold veins like life blood. No! How can you run from yourself? You will never escape me. Just as your foolish mother will burn for all time. I am. felt so real, and when I awoke, I could feel the scars under my bandages pulsing with the cold fire of the demon's touch. I had fled for months, trying to lose myself in the ancient cities of Eastern Europe, where the Americans would not find me, even if they dared to look. But wherever I went, there was one thing that always dogged my steps, that haunted my days and my nights. My failure. 
My whole life had been bent toward a single purpose, to save my mother from her torment. And when the time came, I crumbled like a child in the face of true horror. I will confess that I was a bitter man, adrift on a sea that spiraled ever downward, lost in the darkness of my soul. Out, Otto. I've told you before, you drunken fool. Stay out of my stairwell. Ah, young Master Von Doom. Such a nice boy. Sorry to disturb you. I, I only sought shelter from the cold. Well, seek it elsewhere, old man. If you know what's good for you, you'll learn to stay out of my way. I spent most mornings simply wandering the streets. Nervous energy from my dreams, driving me out of my basement rooms. My bandaged face brought an untouchable anonymity that I found pleasing. I could be present without really being seen. People looked at me, then quickly looked away. But when night fell, Fear of sleep and dreams kept me working long hours, trying to create the fantastic out of parts salvaged from junk shops. Compulsively working and reworking the same devices, seeking perfection I now knew would never be mine. I suppose my rooms must have looked like those of a madman, but a madman is often nothing more than a broken genius. While my escape to Eastern Europe may have made it easier to stay out of the hands of the Americans, it also put me closer to their enemies. Often in my wanderings, I felt I was being watched. You are Van Doom, are you not? My name is my business, and I'd suggest you keep to your own. I think that you are, Victor Von Doom. They told me you would be unafraid, arrogant. And who are they? My superiors, KGB. Department X would like to extend invitation to join in struggle against American imperialism and expansion. Thank you for your invitation. But your party will have to go on without me, I'm afraid. I'm done working for smaller minds. You are mistaken, Vandu. This is invitation you do not turn down. Take your hand from my arm or risk losing it. Careful now with threats. We have many of those we can make as well. Threats only work against men who have things to live for. You're a KGB. You should know that. I was carrying many things on me that could have killed him and his soldiers. But I was foolish, and thought to frighten them off instead. What is that? Get! Listen to me, you vile little toad. Tell your Soviet masters that Victor Von Doom is not for sale. I want nothing to do with you or the Americans. You'll have to fight your silent war without me. I want nothing but to be left alone. Now, if ever I see you again, one of us will die. And I am not afraid to die. At first, it appeared my tactic had succeeded. I no longer noticed the watchful eyes around the city. After all, I was a man who had nothing. So what could they use to threaten me with? And if I was indeed a crazy man, what good was I to them? Let me waste away in my basement with my inventions and my nightmares. Stop! No! No! Let me fall further and further into despair, 
Soon the money I'd saved during my years in America would run out. And what would I do then? I was pondering that exact question. On the morning, everything changed. It was a day like any other, really. Get out, old man! Drink yourself to death elsewhere! And it had been months since my encounter with the Soviet agent. Still, never vigilant. I kept watch for anything out of the ordinary. But never did I expect what awaited me in the public square that morning. Victor, is that... is that really you? Valeria. Oh, my Victor. How? What has happened to you? Wait, I, I don't understand. How, how can you be here? How did you find me? That's... well, it's a long story. Is there somewhere we can sit down? Away from all these people? We found a corner in this small cafe, and this lost friend of my childhood, the one woman other than my mother that I ever truly loved, told me her tale. For months, the Baron's men had been raiding our family's caravan, searching for clues of my whereabouts, no doubt, the result of my time in America. The Baron was trying to gain favor with the United States, offering to deliver me to them. <laughs> After a few of these raids, many in the group feared for my safety. I was their leader, after all, though I'd been gone many years. But a fortune teller named Christos told Valeria that he'd seen a vision of me in his teacup. The Master, he needs you, girl. He said that you had been injured, and that I would find you here, in this town, with your face hidden from the world. Christos? I always found him nothing more than a fool. His predictions have grown sharper lately. And look, here you are. The family had decided to send Valeria to search for me, using what money they had to buy her passage. The fortune teller said that I was lost, that my mind was unraveling, and Valeria had left her homeland for the first time on nothing more than that. She had come to save me, and I must admit, for the next few weeks it appeared likely she would succeed. The hole I was sinking into suddenly disappeared. The darkness of my thoughts eased. <laughs> Replaced by her familiar laugh, her caring touch. She didn't even look away when I showed her what the demon's touch had done to me. After all my losses, maybe oblivion was not to be my destiny, I thought. Maybe my failure was simply the thing that would bring me back to her. The one person who ever really knew me. Maybe I'd been broken so that her gentle hands could put me back together. But when I slept in her arms, no other thoughts troubled me. My ill-fated dalliance with the college girl disappeared into the fog of memory, and even my nightmares were kept at bay. Latveria, I, I suppose that you must go there at some point, but... We'll go together, my love. The family needs you, and it's time to heal. You've spent so many years without smiling. I thought the victor I knew was long gone. But now, I have hope. I can see your smile again. And I'd like to see it on the faces of your children. I don't... I don't know. Latveria, what it's done to our people. To my parents. It's our home, Victor. Nothing else matters. I was starting to believe that perhaps she was right. Maybe it was time to go home. But of course, that was not to be. Otto, leave us be. What have I... I only wanted to give the lady a gift. I meant no harm. Of course you did, Nodo. It's lovely. Why are you so cruel to him, Victor? He's sweet. He's a fool. A drunk who's wasting his life away. Or maybe he's just a sad little man who lost everything he cared about. 
Life isn't always easy on us. You should know that. Better than anyone. I... I didn't mean... But she was right. I should have known. Thank you. I'm okay. I... And I was about to get a very unpleasant reminder of that fact. Just keep hands where I can see, Van Doom. I would not want to hurt girl. Victor, what's... Take your hands off of her, or I swear I'll kill you. Maybe, but your little Valeria dies with me then, does she not? <laughs> see? Because I am not so stupid as you think, Van Doom. Victor, who is this man? How does he know my name? You say threats only work if you have something worth living for. So I give that to you. I show you life not through with Von Doom just yet. And now, you come with me, or I take it all away again. It... How could I be such a fool? I should have sent her away the moment I saw her. Victor, what are you saying? I don't... I told you Christos was not a real fortune teller, Valeria. What was I to do? But the Baron and the Russians kill me. They needed a way to get to Bandung. I just did what I had to do to survive. They told me where he was and I made up everything I needed to convince young Valeria to go to him. She was so young and in love. So I'm not proud of what I did. All right, let her go, and I'll come with you. No, I think we keep her for safekeeping until your work for us is done. He had me, and he knew it. I would have done anything to get Valeria out of his clutches. But as it turned out, she was the only person on that street who was truly safe. <laughs> what is? The flower somehow created a shield around her. A blur of movement rushed past me, and then the street was filled with magic and gunfire. Hey! And then it was over. But my story, it turned out, was just beginning. Victor, what... what just happened? I don't... Otto? Almost... Almost missed my chance to save. Old legs. Too slow. Almost. You knew they would. How? How did you do all that? Listen. Listen to me, young master. I am not who I seem. I come from a temple. High in the mountains of Tibet. Long has it been foretold that a man who lost everything, who hides his true face from the world, who would come to our temple to learn our ancient secrets, and that man would become our master. What are you talking about? You're insane. I'm not. No, it's true. You are the student who will... <laughs> Best, the teachers. You cannot deny destiny, Victor Von Doom. I know because I, I was, was, I, I was, was. Victor, what is he talking about? Find my temple, young master. <laughs> they will teach you how to master. Science of magic. Your path is just beginning. Find them. Find them. Victor. You have to leave, Valeria. You have to go home. What? No. You're going to come with me. We... No. It's different now. Everything is different now. You can't just... You never could understand. I'm the one who's different. Different than you. Different than everyone. 
No, Victor, you can't mean that. Oh, Victor. Oh, no. And, difficult as it was, I turned my back on her again. Destiny had reared its terrible head once more, and I knew I must follow where it led. But I knew also that the Baron of Latveria would face my vengeance one day. He'd meddled with what was left of the heart of Von Doom, and he would pay for what he'd done to me, and to Valeria. My journey from Eastern Europe to the Himalayas was neither quick nor easy, but I did not falter. Destiny had called Victor Von Doom to the highest mountains, the most dangerous paths of the world, but there would be no turning back. Otto had died, leaving me no more than a clue to the whereabouts of this secret sect of monks he'd come from. The men whose ancient knowledge of science and magic was to be mine. I spent months combing the Tibetan villages along the base of the mountain range, searching for those who knew of the temple in the mountains. It was my father's father who spoke of them, young Sita, but he never told where they resided. More months translating ancient scrolls and tablets, sifting through religious drivel for the answers I sought. Until at last I found something in a charred parchment from 600 years earlier. A reference to the wise ones who had experimented with things beyond mortal ken, and who, upon the outrage of their brothers, had fled to the mountains. A crude sketch mapped their theoretical location high above a nearby temple. It wasn't much, the guess made over half a millennium ago. But it would have to do. If they were up there, I would find them. Survival in the mountains was not easy. I'd grown up around the Latverian Alps, had suffered beyond reason in their harsh climes. But this... this was a world unto itself. A lost horizon of wind and snow, with the clouds above separated to show that the peaks climbed ever higher still. A man could wander those mountains for a lifetime, a mere ten meters from that which he seeks, and never even know. But of course, I was no ordinary man. I had my own devices to help my progress. Devices to keep me warm. And to clear away blocked passages. Yet still, even with all my inventiveness, and all my willpower, the mountain nearly broke me. It began in my sleep, the cold creeping into my bones, then into my dreams, where it was always so cold it burned. No! No! Your pleas mean nothing, witch. The boy failed you, but perhaps he saved you from the fire after all. Perhaps, like the little fool, you'll freeze instead, and then I'll snap your brittle bones to splinters and use them to pull out his eyes. No, I beg of you, let my child be free. Fool. Is your child cursed from birth? He was never free. <laughs> the mountain, the dreams about mother that had returned since separating from Valeria, the demon's touch pulsing under my bandages. Given enough time, they would drive me insane. This I knew. Just a dream. Not mother. Not real. And then, my food ran out. 
So for the next days I wandered, starving, nearly aimless, but always climbing. In the wind I could hear the voice of the demon whispering, Join her, Bondu. Come and join your mother on the altar of blood. And in the haze of sleet, I could see his shadow stalking me, like the easy prey I had become. But it was not the demon. No. The Yeti, the beast of legend. And now, here it was, hoping to make me nothing more than a memory. I had not planned for this, and in my weakened state, it almost made me laugh. I, the great Victor Von Doom, had come seeking destiny in these mountains, and it appeared it had found me. That it had left me no choice. But maybe this would not be my last moment after all. It occurred to me, as I smelled the Yeti's burning flesh, that the mountain's attempt to do me in might just be the thing that saved me, assuming I could survive my wounds. That night, I was forced to cannibalize the last of my devices to create a fire. Then I did what I could to bandage my wounds, shutting out the pain of the Yeti's claws. It was not difficult. I had known the touch of claws far sharper. And though weakened from the attack, I knew I must continue. I had to be close. But as I climbed ever higher, I could feel my wounds opening, feel the blood seeping down my side. And I wondered if I was to share the fate of my father, to die frozen in the snow. My last thoughts before losing consciousness were of that day, so long ago, when the cold first crept into my bones. The morning I learned the truth about the world. I know not how long I lay there. Certainly long enough to kill any normal man. You see? You see? You see his face? But I do not recall the hands that lifted me from that cold embrace. Nor do I recall the trip to the doors of the sacred temple. I remember waking a week later, with my wounds healed. Knowing that once again I had succeeded, had done what no mortal man ever could. He's awake! He survived! Come, everyone, look! He is alive! And this place of wonder, this lost temple in the mountains, would teach me all I had left to learn. I would surpass these monks. They knew it. And when I did, destiny would be mine to shape. And so days became weeks, and weeks faded to years without notice. Ever was I lost in my studies, and there was much to learn. For centuries, these men had been combining magic and technology almost instinctively creating devices the outside world could only dream of, until recently. As my studies wore on, I began to lean again towards science, but this time, with the eyes of one who had seen that nothing is impossible, that no laws of our world are absolute. And after five years among these monks, the day did indeed come when they called me... Asta. We have taught you all our ancient secrets, and still you grow beyond us. Your mind sees answers to questions we have yet to ask. We bow before you, 
Oh, great one. At that moment, I knew the world lay within my grasp. That whatever Von Doom wanted, it would be mine. The question was, where would I start? Let us prepare for a journey. Too long had I been away from the world, and while I knew that my ultimate path lay in the Nether Realms, I felt that other fates also awaited Victor Von Doom. So I needed to see what shape the world had gotten into since I had left it. And I needed supplies for the things I intended to create. What I hadn't counted on was how much I had changed. Well before, though my heart was not filled with pity for the mass of mankind, I now found I looked at them as nothing more than gnats fluttering in my way. Marupis! Marupis! Get away from me, rancid little creatures! Marupis, please, mister! Marupis! And I wondered how one such as I had ever sprung from the ranks of men. Surely, it must have been a miracle. The top level of the temple's inner sanctum had become my private quarters, with its tall windows looking out at the endless mountain ranges. And in this place, my servants and I built a device with which I could observe the whole world. A compound screen viewer, whose receivers drew signals from radio waves, satellite feeds, television broadcasts, and nearly anything else floating in the ether around us. Nothing was kept hidden from me. I watched simultaneous news broadcasts from around the globe, and I tapped into satellite controls and learned of how Latveria had changed. The man responsible for my parents' death had now taken the throne. I felt bile rise in my throat, hatred for this man suddenly pulsing in my veins. But then, I saw something else. Here with Dr. Reed Richards, whose innovative approach to space travel has impacted NASA like nothing since the moon landing. Richards. A man who it is whispered in scientific circles may be the smartest man in the world. If not, the universe. Richards. Oh, that's really exaggerating things. I'm just a man. Suddenly, the day of my failure in college came back to me. I recalled Richards snooping through my papers, questioning my science. And all at once, I knew Richards was working for the American military, and they must have sent him to sabotage my work. Richards was responsible for the flaws that had allowed the demon to touch me. Richards. Dr. Reed Richards. After we constructed the multiple screen viewer, the master became eccentric, especially when he saw his old rival's success. From that day on, he insisted we call him Dr. Doom. Some among us found it odd, but he was our master, our leader. We always knew he would not be like other men. My plans were nearly formed in my mind. The first steps towards my true destiny taking shape. When my dreams returned. Of course, my lovely Victor. Your witch of a wife did us all in, were not? We're not alike other boys. The black arts and... Cynthia, you must... Don't. To remind me that while I may have considered myself removed from humanity... Don't! This insanity... You say my mother was Think a witch. of your family. That she brought doom upon you Think all. Think of your son. Well, if you cast us out, I swear to you... Our people are constantly in tatters. Cynthia, please! Early one step ahead of the Baron's persecution. I will grow up to be exactly like if we her. we had some power. Superior to their masses. When I'm truly my mother's life. son, 
I'll track you it all down. It could be better than the this. The darkness that she brought will be nothing compared to what I do to you. Not that kind of power. Be steady, child. Your father is a great man. Oh, my son. He will be foul oh. like your mother you are. You! I shared one thing with them. Oh. And your priest. Stop where you oh. are, gypsy. Put on my coat. Victor, wait! They'll give up soon. Wait for me! You! <laughs> You're here. <laughs> You're at <laughs> my doom. Victor, no! You seek a reward, you foul creature? Look at us. I pray you find one. We are going to be in so much trouble, Victor. The Frenti. Oh, my son. How like your mother you are. And you're freezing. Come, put on my coat. I awoke overwhelmed. Images of Valeria's face. Of the soldiers taking father away. Of mother lost so long ago to the demon. These things assaulted my mind. And I was filled with sorrow. My body ached of it. This was the demon I knew, alive in me, trying to prove I was but a mortal man, that he could touch me any time he wished, and I would fall to pieces. This had to be stopped. Von Doom would not be like other men. No emotion, no pain, no cold or warmth would affect me again. Work began the next day. More fire, you hear me? I need more heat! More! On my master stroke, using what I had learned in this temple, I would remove myself from this world. I would create a second skin. Adaptive technology would line the inner working of this armor, and an enchantment would seal it from the demon's touch. It would keep him from my dreams, but the cold metal on my skin would remind me of his existence, and that he held my mother's soul captive in his realm. For now... Let us know if it pains you, Master. Pain? That is for lesser men. From this day on, I know no pain. Bring me the mask. It is ready, Master. Yes, it is perfect. Never again will mortal eyes gaze upon Victor Von Doom. From this moment on, there is only what I have become. There is only... And so, what then? Then I began claiming my destiny, which I knew must begin in Latveria, the place that had destroyed my family. It was there that Dr. Doom would first make his presence known to the world, where his mark would be left in flame and the blood of tyrants, the blood of lesser men. So I took one of my most faithful servants, Laren, to aid me in my task. I am honored to be chosen to assist you, Master. Of course you are. And I flew across the frozen sky on the device of my own making, toward my homeland, far away, plotting the course of my revenge. whose beauty had long ago collided with poverty and decay. 
where the needs of the rich were paid for with the sweat of the peasants. Where debtors' prisons stocked the workforce with slave labor who toiled under the watchful eyes of the king's soldiers. <laughs> After a week of careful study, I knew exactly how to best make my presence known. Laugh not at the people you oppress, soldiers of Latveria, for the time of your reckoning is at hand. So swears Dr. Doom. Hey! Hey! You just stay back! What the devil? Close, soldier. But I've seen devils, and believe me, Doom is something else altogether. Fire! Kill it! Whatever it is! <laughs> Fools. No weapon forged by mortal hands can touch Von Doom. Von... Von Doom? I knew of a victor Von Doom. Long ago. He fought the Baron's men. Before the Baron became king. I was once Victor Von Doom, and I have come back to my homeland for one purpose alone. To stain these hills with the blood of tyrants. Now go. Go and spread the news. The days of King Vladimir are soon coming to an end. So says Doctor Doom. Yes, I could have simply flown to the King's castle and slain him. None of his soldiers could have stopped me. But I wanted my fame to spread throughout the land before I claimed it as my own. For the peasants to see me as their hero, their savior. And I wanted King Vladimir to fear my approach, my revolution. Laren and I had moved quickly, establishing a base of operations in the bowels of an old abandoned castle, overlooking a small village long abandoned after the deaths in one night of all the children who lived there. Here we would build the weapons we needed and gather the people around us as I began to reshape Latveria with my own strong hands. What troubles you, master? Nothing troubles Dr. Doom, Laren. You know that. Of course, master. But you do seem lost in thought. More so than usual. True. I've been plotting the course of my ascent, and I believe it may simply take too long, making these small strikes, waiting for my legend to spread. And you are thinking there is a way to do it more quickly? I am. But it requires something I left long ago. What is that, Master? My family. They were not hard to find. Not for one who was born on the roads they traveled each season. Boris? Hey! Who is that there? Show yourself! The years have gone hard on you, Boris. But surely there have not been so many that you've forgotten my voice. Master Victor? It... it cannot be! What have you... what have they done to you? No one has done a thing to me, old man. What you see before you is what I have made myself into. Something beyond man. I did not expect you to understand. But I do expect you to follow my orders. Of course, Master. What can I do? I had them gather the leaders of the family late that night, and I told them of the road that lay before them. A road that would see our ragged gypsy tribe usurp the power from those who lorded it over us for generation upon generation. I don't know how you expect to do this, Von Doom. The king has the backing of the Russians now, and more weapons and soldiers than you can count. I can calculate further than you'd ever imagine, Gustav. But I didn't invite you here for a debate. I'm telling you what will happen. I will lead the people of Latveria in the revolution, and I will succeed. I have nearly the arsenal I need already. What I do not have enough of yet are the people. That is where all of you will come in. No one knows the back roads of this land better, and you will use them. 
You will send the messengers throughout the land to spread my news. And what news would that be, Von Doom? That a new day is dawning for Latveria. That I am bringing this new day to them. That those willing to fight against King Vladimir must join me. And why would the people listen to us? Because your messengers will carry these. <laughs> holograms they project will show the work I've already begun. The people will understand what I have become, and that the time of their freedom is at hand. That night when he came back, we were stunned to see him like that, covered in armor for the first time, and he seemed a bit uh, crazy. And for all Torvald, he said what we were all thinking. Seems to me like you're looking to become king yourself, Von Doom. So I don't see as there'd be any more free under your rule. Torvald, you cannot speak to the master like- Let him speak, Boris. You leave us for years. Then you show up in this madman's outfit. And you expect us to just, to help you raise an army? Yes, I expect you to do my bidding. Because I am still the leader of this clan. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Torvald had played the fiddle at Victor's parents' wedding, but he just cut him down without a thought. I'll never forget that. He even made us bury his remains. Poor old fool. Within days, riders have made their way throughout the land, spreading my messages. And in the secrecy of the abandoned village below, my army began to gather itself together, awaiting the orders of their savior. Though not all who came, came to serve. Is that really even you, Victor? Valeria, what are you doing here, girl? We prepare for war. This is no place for women. I am not your subject yet, Victor. I can choose where to be for myself. It isn't wise to disagree with me. No, I'm sure it is not. What do you want? Forgive me for disturbing you. I just had to see for myself what you'd become. And now that I have, I don't know what to make of it. This, this suit of armor is what you left me for. The armor is merely a shell, Valeria. And the man inside is not one you would understand. Not anymore. It keeps your dreams away, doesn't it? The dreams of your mother. Show her out, Laren. Yes, master. Can't you even look me in the eyes, Victor? And you think you have power now? You don't. All you've done is build better walls between yourself and the world. <laughs> И не води рукой, я уже как большой, и сука сам все знаю. Валерия couldn't understand. She still looked for the fragile boy within me, the boy she loved so many years ago. I felt nothing but pity as she was dragged, crying for my sight. Days later, I made sure that her uncle got her out of the country before the true fighting began. Latveria would no longer be a place for one of such gentle spirits. No, Latveria, until I held it in my own hands, would be a place of fear and blood, and not much beyond. As my strength grew in numbers, so also grew the frequency of my assaults on the King's men. With each legion led by creatures of my own imagining. Robotic soldiers, much like the ones I'd begun during my years in America. But I'd perfected them this time, and simplified their logic protocols. 
Now they listen to no one, save doom. They did only my bidding. We began driving the king's men from villages and towns. My rebellion forces were simply more than they could withstand. It was going exactly as planned. By spring's end, I would be face to face with the king on a field of corpses. And with each small victory, more of the downtrodden in my homeland rallied to my side. To fight for freedom. To celebrate the change that was upon them. To bask in the glory of Von Doom. But elsewhere, such change drew another response entirely. My wish, he claims to be a messenger from their leader, this Dr. Doom. I was to deliver this to you. Doom will speak for himself. Very well. Take him out back and shoot him, Captain. Yes, my wish. Wait, but I'm a messenger. How will you deliver your answer? Perhaps I'll have them stuff it in the mouth of your corpse, traitor. No! <laughs> King Vladimir, I'm here to offer you one last chance. Chance? For what? To live, which is more than you deserve. What right do you have to speak thus to your king? You are no king of mine. Merely an old man raised beyond your station too late in life. But to me, you will always be the Baron. The sniveling little man who drove my father to his death because he could not cure your wife's disease. Von Du? Then it's true. You are the Doctor Du they speak of. I am. And I make my offer only once. Surrender now, or die at my hands, old man. You did not expect him to surrender, master? No, Laren, and I'd have been very disappointed if he did. After all, the true spectacle will begin tomorrow. Bot 14, field report. Bot leader 3 reports Soviet supply line ready for destruction, Master Doom. Transmit order to bot leader 3. Destroy. Awaiting your orders. My people, the king has rejected my call for peace. He has rejected my offer to spare his life. And so tomorrow, we begin the final march of our journey. A march to victory! To victory! To victory! To victory. I could almost taste its acid flavor on my tongue already. People of Latveria had rallied to me, and the battle lines had been clearly drawn. So began the march to war. A war I would bring to the very doorstep of the feeble man who thought himself my king. to numerous strikes over the past weeks. The battle we now waged was unlike any that had come before. There was a true clash of forces, with no quarter asked and no mercy given. This was the war that would define the future of my country, that would spawn the legend of the power of Doctor Doom. And all would stand in awe of that power by the time the sun set on the Tamanek Valley that day. All who still lived. And from the Tamanek, we would march north to the capital city. 
We can make the journey by dawn tomorrow if we march through the night. My lord, I'm unsure if that is possible. The men are exhausted. If we don't allow them to rest, the next excursion may not go as well. Yes. Perhaps you are right, Captain. But perhaps the people need only see their leader for their feet to find the will to march on to victory. Come, walk among the forces with me, and see what a word from me can do to the human spirit. Of course, my lord. But there is one other issue. These men, the king's soldiers. Yes, I suppose it would not be considered right to execute prisoners. No, my lord, it isn't that. They wish to join us. And they say many among the king's ranks feel the same. Of course they do, Captain. It is merely human nature, the desperate need to survive. After an interrogation of the prisoners, a new plan of action was put in place. We would march the next morning, and one of the prisoners would ride ahead to warn of our approach. By nightfall the next day, my forces and I were amassed before the capital city, waiting for the siege to begin at first light. It must have been a terrifying sight to behold, the armies of Von Doom at his doorstep. They are everywhere! Is there no one left in Latveria who hasn't joined that lunatic's cause? There are many, my liege. But Von Doom's army is vast. My men and I will do what we must to hold them at bay. Is it a lost cause then, Captain? Our supply routes from the Russians have been cut off, so whatever reinforcements we hope for will not arrive. But we still have the high ground, so we may prevail. No man has breached these walls in 400 years. But I fear this is no man we're dealing with, my king. And the weapons of his army are unlike anything that has yet tested this fortress walls. Find me your fastest horseman, Captain, and have my sons brought to me. Of course, my king. My rule may fail, but my line will endure. Rudolfo and Zorba will ride tonight to escape this doom. And so, with the coming of first light, our armies faced each other across the field. And the old king watched from the tallest tower of the palace. But when the battle cry was sounded... Attack! Kill the usurpers! Neither side responded. They simply stood in place, as if time had been stopped. What... What witchcraft is this? Give them the signal to attack! Again! I am giving it, sire. But they do not obey. No! 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 Yes. The only movement on the field of battle that morning was mine. The king's men had been delivered to me by the soldier I'd freed the day before. And when I strode toward them, they parted like tall grass before me. Clear the birds! Stand aside! Making way for their new ruler to pass. And as I made my way through the streets of the capital city, the populace nearly stood, gazing in wonder. Your king, where is he run to? He'll flee through the chapel into the cathedral, my lord. There's a tunnel in the church basement. Then the cathedral is where he'll meet his end. The pulsar burst was useful for short distances only, but it allowed me one thing. A dramatic entrance. Not softly to your grave, old fool. I beg of you. No! And within the sacred walls of his temple, his gods did not protect him from the iron hands of vengeance.
So, it is done. And now, a new age begins. The king is dead. Long live Von Du. My forces are yours to command, my liege. After that, things moved quickly. Latveria had been literally dying for progress, and I brought it to them like a hurricane. King Vladimir's castle was raised that week by my robots. The town of my mother's downfall was named the new capital, and in no time, its barren homes began to fill again with life. By fall, I had made additions to the modest castle where my rebellion began. And so it was, on the dais overlooking this town and my people, so many of them that had crowded the streets, that Victor Von Doom was crowned monarch of Latveria. Let an era of peace and prosperity spread throughout the lands. So says Von Doom. And there was peace, for the most. But even in victory, I knew that I would not find solace so easily, and thus began a ritual that would last many, many years. Come to me now, O oh darkness, O oh cold. Come speak with Von Doom, whom you have wronged. You have changed, young son. Improve this spell will hold for now. It will need but a moment, for that is all I require. Then speak, speak while my amusement gives me patience. I wish to free my mother's soul. And why would I ever do this when her suffering? Is my delight when I can crush her bones <laughs> and watch her crawl. But I will make you a deal, because that is what we demons do. Name it, and it is yours. One night a year, I will allow you to fight for her freedom. But every time you lose, the people of your country will grow to despise you more and more. In just a few years' time, you will be the most hated man in Latveria. And if I win? Then you will have her freedom, but she will still be beyond your grasp. For where her soul goes from here is a place we will never enter. And so, in a way, <laughs> I will still win. I accept the deal. There was never a doubt that you would, King Fool. So, each year when the storms raged through the valleys, my servant Boris and I would descend to my deepest dungeons, where I would face my only true test in this world. And were you ever able to save her? I... think... God, my memory is hazy on this point. I tire of this. Leave me to my rest. Of course, your highness. I just... well... There's one last thing I'd like to get on film, if you'll allow it. It would be a real coup if I could get a look under your mask. Boris said that you'd cooperate if I mentioned Valeria. Ah, Valeria. Very well. But know that what you're about to see has been hidden from the world for decades. 
and though I care not for the flesh of existence any longer, I warn you. It is not an easy sight to behold. No. Indeed it isn't. But thank you for your time, Your Highness. It's been quite informative. Work just like you said, Boris. Is Valeria his failsafe word? In a way, yes. And this Doombot, he truly believes he's the real Victor Von Doom? He does. He even ruled for a time when the Master was otherwise engaged. But those memories, can they be relied upon? They are the Master's story, in his own words. Programmed into the machines he built to stand in his place. That this robot grew too human, beyond even the Master's expectations, proves their veracity, I think. That machine is so like my Master. He cannot bring himself to destroy it. I don't know how to thank you for this, Boris. The access to all these prisoners, it's been illuminating to say the least. Their view of doom, along with his own words. This is a story of a lifetime. Yes, I'm sure it would be, if you were ever allowed to tell it. What? Hey! What are you doing? This isn't funny, Boris. Let me out of here. I am sorry, madam. Our deal was that I would allow you into the dungeon to learn the Master's secrets. But like all who know too much of Doctor Doom, once you enter this dark place, you are never meant to leave. Boris! No! 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 